Hey, how are you going? Doc from DocuDarko.com. Thanks for hitting play and remember to hit subscribe as well. I'd really appreciate it. Today we're talking esports and in particular the high school league which is happening in Queensland at the moment. It's put together by XP Esports and it's pretty amazing. Today I'm going to be talking to Tanil Lynch who's the high school league coordinator at XP Esports. Now Tanil works full time engaging high schools, supporting teachers and students while they develop and implement esports into the classroom. Alongside her team she develops programs, facilitates tournaments and connects students from rural and metro areas through gaming and personal development workshops. It's a great job she does and she's a great chat as well. I hope you really enjoy it as we talk about eSports High School League. Um, so okay, let's, let's start off. Let's um, tell me a bit about XP eSports Australia and what you guys do. Yep, so XP eSports has been around for the past couple of years. They've mainly branched into doing live events and tournaments um, at the ECA or um, locally. Um, alongside the the Brisbane Bullets, Broncos, and um, the Brisbane Roar as well. Yeah, um, sure. They were known for hosting a lot of Fortnite tournaments, um, Call of Duty tournaments as well, from ages, teenagers all the way to adults as well. So, um, yeah, that's since 2017. Um, and they also worked alongside, you know, partners such as University of Queensland to host big events at the Echo as well. So that was, uh, that's or 16 different high schools from around Southeast Queensland coming to compete on stage. And it was a overall a great success. Um, yeah. And we were going to be going back to the ECHA this year with a lot more in store, but unfortunately it was canceled. Of course. Um, so looking into what else they can do um, might be online uh, at the moment with the ECHA. It's great that there's an opportunity now for kids to actually do it. And it's so bizarre that they do it from their school. So you can, can you tell me about, a bit about the integration with the school? Yeah, so a lot of schools have actually been investing into esports or at least looking into esports over the past couple of years. It's um, demanded or it's a high demand from students for sure, but also we find a lot of parents are seeking um, support and uh, guidance with their young ones when it comes to screen time or, or playing online. And teachers, you know, they choose the profession to support young people. So for them, esports is a really great way to. Um, relate to the young people and incorporate it into the classroom where they can provide support and direction for these young people, um, as well as let them pursue something that they're passionate in. Instead of just sitting in front of a, a PowerPoint talking about online stranger danger or yeah. sportsmanship or stuff like that, they actually get to practice it in a real life environment. They're learning without even realizing it. Yeah, and sure. They're able to compete on that, you know, into school level as well. Because you're, you're heavily involved with the integration with the school, right? That's part yeah, of your job. Yeah, so yeah. I'm mainly just there to support the teachers, answer any questions, um, and also deliver some resources and stuff like that as well. Um, and then we also facilitate the tournament itself, which is, it's not like the hardest job in the world because it's just providing them an environment where they can play online against other schools, um, giving them fixtures, giving them matches, um, and then giving them some resources on the side. A lot of this is uh, driven by the teachers. They're the ones with the passion that want to see it in schools. So we just help where we can in that regard. Yeah, it's great. So there's more to it than just the gaming part too. So you've mentioned there um, that there's a, is there, is there like a theory base behind it as well? Like, so esports is just like the any old sport, for example. Uh, yeah. If you look at the sports industry that we have today, AFL, rugby, uh, soccer, swimming, athletics, etc. It's not just about the, the pro players. It's not just about being on the field and playing at the time. There's a lot of uh, things that go on in the background that make these big events happen um, um, and train the, the um, athletes as well as look after their mental health as well as manage the team so that they can make their pref press conferences or travel from A to B for these different events. So esports is an industry, it's particularly large in the US and, and Europe, um, but it's definitely growing in Australia as well. Esports is an industry that requires a lot of different professions to come together to make these events happen. So that's I was going to ask that, what type, of, um, what type of job opportunities come out of, uh, of doing something like this? Yeah, for, for young people who are looking yeah. at graduating high school or um, university or even trade school anytime soon. Um, you've got a lot, lot of different job opportunities from, you know, an AV technician to a caster, a commentator, a coach. You've got esports psychologists coming out. You've got, it's, it's honestly a plethora of jobs out there. Um, and there is a need for it as well. It's, yeah. it's a very undiscovered uh, industry at the moment that requires a lot more people to um, really get hands on and, and discover what it's all about. 
Yeah, I guess when people look at the, uh, the the type of industry, they forget that gaming is a billion dollar industry, like multi-billion dollar, um, even more so than the movie industry at the moment. The gaming industry is making just bucket loads of cash everywhere. And so there's job opportunities uh, jumping up and down, like in even in game development and things like that. So it's great that we're integrating gaming into school and doing it through esports is, is a fantastic thing, way to do it as well. Um, well most- about eighty percent of of students these days do play some sort of video game. Mm. So I think it's important not to ignore or to try and push that under the rug. Instead, incorporate it into the classroom, teach them how to um, balance their studies with their game time as well as exercise and the like. So yeah, yeah, it's definitely something that's growing. Um, everything from game development to being the pro player itself. Yeah, and you're a gamer yourself, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> just a bit. I play a bit in my spurt. Um, and I'm, we're not just talking about Animal Crossing. You play a lot of other great things as well. Um, so what type of games are you into? Um, well, I started gaming age five, I think, was Tomb Raider, um, yep. was up there, but Spyro, Rugrats, like everything from PlayStation 1 to 2 games. And then as I've gotten older, and um, it's, Call of Duty was probably my first online uh, sure. multiplayer sure. game and then Dota 2 is also what I play as well um, and you know we support Rocket League and we're, we're going further into that sense and honestly the, the amount of skill that it takes to get good at these games is I can't even hit the ball when it comes to Rocket League yeah I'm, I uh, suck at it as well yeah. <laughs> but you know it's like anything you can't expect a tap dancer to be able to you know dance hip hop just like you can't expect someone in Rocket League to be able to play this game or that game so there's yeah. a lot of different specialties for young people and, and they do branch um, you know, a young person might choose their sport at age 15 and then they can become pro at that or they might choose it at 12 and jump around a bit. So, Are you yeah. um, seeing a lot of young women get involved in this competition? Yeah, we actually find that um, a lot of the younger players, so year eight, year nine, are female. Um, not the majority yet or at, maybe at all, but um, there's yeah. definitely a lot of younger players who are. So we're hoping that with, you know, esports um, in high schools, like the high school league might encourage these young women to pursue that or to stay in a team throughout their high school so that they feel included and involved even by the time they get to year 11 and 12. Um, and then, you know, when it comes out, um, once you're at university or, or working full time, um, you'll find that there are a lot of female gamers already out there. So yeah. Yeah. I was reading an article the other day that said that um, there was 48% of gamers in Australia were actually female. So I thought that was interesting yeah. to read that. Yeah. Um, but in terms of esports, it's a lot less. So just casual video gamers you do have yeah. almost half female but when it comes to esports it's it's a very small number oh, we'll have to get that number up yes for sure and, <laughs> for and sure. definitely girls are you know there was a, a girl um last year on one of the programs and she was end up ended up being the star player of, of yeah. her match people were yelling her name on stage at the echo it was really cool that's cool and that. i really love that i love the the real atmosphere that esports creates it is just like watching um your more traditional sports um yeah i've got to get I get caught out because you, you can't say it's like watching real sports as, as some people would describe it. Cause it is a real sport. You're, you're training, you're, um, you're spending a lot of time getting prepared and, and, and learning a craft to, to be able to play these games. Um, yeah. Often people the, shy away because they don't understand it. But, yeah. 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 I mean, even um, you, you see on Fox sports, they're showing like FIFA championships. Um, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, yeah. People playing FIFA, which is, you know, that would have been unheard of a few years back. Um, so currently you're using Rocket League for the school league and uh, are you planning to expand beyond that? Yes, we are. So we've started off with Rocket League this term in term two um, and we're going to be branching out into Rainbow Six Siege for the seniors, um, cool. which is like a tactical shooter. Um, and then we're also looking at doing FIFA as well in term three. So that will incorporate that small one-on-one um, players to come from each school as opposed to teams. And, and uh, the, yeah. And the schools in general, like they're all over the um, all over Queensland currently, um, which I think is fantastic because this is the sort of thing that you could offer to metro kids and regional kids would really miss out on. And it's great to see regional kids getting involved in this as well. So how many schools do you have taking part? We just started off with a small amount this term. So yeah. term two, 10 schools, 22 teams. Um, but we're branching out as each term comes around, we'll invite more and more schools on board. Um, anyone's welcome to join. Yeah, everyone from regional areas to metro. I myself am from near Cairns, the Atherton Tablelands. And okay, yeah. uh, I've gone up there and visited a lot of those schools. And it's a really great chance for them to actually jump on the field and verse people from Brisbane or verse people from the Sunshine Coast. Mm. It's something that, you know, regional kids don't get the chance to do. They can't compare their skills. They can't verse people who are of higher caliber because they're stuck in small towns or yeah. uh, far away from that. So yeah. you know, I've 
spoken to teachers from Roma, Chinchilla, um, out to Wumbawe. So there's a lot of different uh, schools and teachers and parents very, very interested in getting their, their students involved. That's great. And of course, something like this is, it would be really hard to put together without getting some sponsors involved. Can you tell me about the sponsors you've got? Yeah, so we have a, a few sponsors that have helped uh, get involved. So Computer Alliance actually have done quite a lot of work with schools already over the past few years, fitting their um, schools out with hardware and, and software and stuff like that. Um, and they're looking to branch more into esports. They've given us some prize packs for the winning teams of the Rocket League students. Um, and those students are able to win, um, you know, computer uh, gear and, and equipment that will help expand their esports room. Um, at the school so in in that way it's like it's not just for like solely for the students but it's for their room for them to expand for them to get mm. more, more kids involved and so on um also zq racing has given have given some um chairs to the comfy three winning chairs students. comfy chairs yep and then blk who are helping us with um fitting them out for uniforms and outfits as well fantastic that's great it's great to see people get on board and, and helping out the the students as well you're a few weeks yeah. in now um which is which is really cool um and you're doing you're doing the um the broadcast of the the event every monday night that's right isn't it yep monday um, afternoon. yeah every monday afternoon 4 30 yeah it's about 4 20 4 30 yeah start um so what are you seeing from the students now how are they reacting to it oh it's it's been really good actually yeah. um i don't very, very impressed with the students this uh, this first season. The amount of sportsmanship that you see between the students. A lot of the older students are actually offering their time to support the younger, the younger kids who might be newer to the game. Um, give them tips and tricks. Uh, yeah, cool. Offer to play on the weekend. Offer to show them tricks as well. Um, and it's just overall been a very nice surprise to see just how everyone is uh, behaving online and. and that is great because it, you know it could get uber competitive. Um, but to see, to see that sort of camaraderie is, is fantastic. Yeah. And it gives them as like, you know, in this instance, everyone's been absolutely awesome in the case where you might get cyber bullying in the future. It actually gives the teachers and the parents the opportunity to step in when they see stuff like that happen. Um, because in the past, you know, teachers, kids could be sitting in their room, um, on a Friday night reading and saying whatever they like online and no Mm. one's ever been there to vet it or support them or talk to them about what they're reading. But in this environment, if you know, you see that sort of stuff, you're able to step in immediately and teach and coach these kids. What is the right way to respond or the right way to ignore the comments or even, um, how to respond. I think the, 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 the perfect word you use there was coach because it does, um, the way you describe it, it feels like uh, you're in a football team and you've, 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 the referee sent you off and the coach tells you off and tells you what you did wrong. Um, and and you, know, that you get that same feeling from having a teacher looking over you uh, while you're playing the esports game. And, and all, the, um, all the sessions are all um, supervised, aren't they? Yes, yes, they're all supervised. Yeah. And even with this quarantine period, we've had parents, um, for the kids that are playing at home, the parents are supervising from home as well. So it, it really gives um, the adults of this situation, the parents and teachers, the opportunity to have a bit more confidence when it comes around video games. I find that mm. a lot of uh, parents, because they don't really understand video games in general or um, you know why it's so fun for the kids, they're not quite sure about how to approach a lot of the things but if you have the support of people like xp and and the school they're able to um rebound ideas and rebound ways to support yeah people. yeah it's spot on um yeah knowledge is power in 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 yeah. every aspect there um so where do people go to get more information and to watch the uh the monday night shows yeah sure so we um are at xpesports.gg and there'll be a high school link on that that you can click through to and if you want to watch them live, we're on twitchtv.com. So head over to twitch.tv forward slash TV, and you'll be able to see the broadcast live. Otherwise, just head to the website and you'll see it down the bottom as well. There you have it. There's Tenille. Isn't she awesome? And such a great ambassador for gaming in Australia as well. She runs the high school league at XP Esports. So make sure you hit them up in all their social channels. We can't wait to see what they're up to next. We look forward to seeing it expand as well into the rest of the country. Um, I'm Doc from DocuDarko.com. Thanks heaps for watching. And remember to hit subscribe. Uh, We'd love for you to watch some of our other great videos as well. Like, say, that one.